Um, I'm going to be talking about the Open Catalyst project, which is a collaboration between Meta AI, Carn CMU, and A3MD, uh, University of Toronto, and Ted Sargent's team. Um, and what we're trying to do here is to speed up the discovery of new catalysts for applications uh, related to climate change, um, such as figuring out ways to efficiently compute absorption energies uh, for new catalysts. Now, when we're thinking about what works, um, one of the questions I get a lot is why is Meta even interested you know, in this problem? Um, and I'm part of the fundamental AI research group. So we do look at problems that are very diverse and we you know, try to find things that are just kind of interesting to work on. So when we look at new, when we try to find new problems, we look for things that have high impact, you know, they're, they could change the world. And I think you know, material science is one of those applications. It's a challenging AI problem, like approximating DFT and doing that is really hard. But I think one of the things that people don't think about as much um, when you think about, you know, which problem should we work on is which one are we, you know, uniquely positioned to address or to tackle. And I think this is, this is the reason why we're really working on this problem is because our lab will be very open. We can collaborate with a lot of people externally, which, you know, we don't have a lot of chemistry and material science expertise within Meta. So that allows us to do this project. And then the fact that we have, you know, a lot of compute to throw at this problem uh, can make a big difference. One of the things I've like thoroughly enjoyed, one of the things that really gets me excited about this project is the fact that we get to work with computationalists, experimentalists, software engineers, ML scientists. Uh, you know, we, we, gonna, we meet on at least a weekly basis, if not more. Um, and, you know, a project like these just isn't possible without, you know, people with diverse talents. I know people have talked about before about we need to train people and get, you know, more you know, people with, uh, you know, a single individual with diverse talents. But I think, one of the biggest, um, the, one way to really make this work is to bring people with diverse talents together together, you know, to work on a single project. Because just what I've seen, um, it's really hard to build up that knowledge across all these different disciplines in this single individual. And you really need to have a lot of people with these diverse talents coming together uh, to be able to execute on these things. I've been just thoroughly amazed by, you know, all of the subtle details and, you know, doing experiments, uh, you know, in the computational side of things, it's, it's, it's been really eye opening. And the other thing is, you know, at Meta, we have a lot of compute. And one of the things we saw is just a lack of large scale data sets across diverse sets of materials that were open source that people can train models on use to, uh, for various purposes. And that's why we, you know, built the Open Catalyst uh, 2020 data set and Open Catalyst 20, 2022 data set. Um, it took over 500 million hours to compute. We wouldn't be able to do this again without our external collaborators helping us and basically leading the way on this. Um, and then working really closely together, we were able to create this data set, open source it. And we wanted to do it in a way that allowed it to be easily used by not only the computationalists and experimentalists within the chemistry and material science community, but you also wanted to make this an exciting problem for the ML community. Because we look at this as, um, you know, a way of bringing that ML community to, you know, chemistry and material science by making it the problem easier for them. So they don't need to understand a lot of the chemistry material science behind this uh, and be able to just kind of tackle the problem with the algorithms that they're already developing, kind of benchmark and kind of explore this space. Now, the challenges, we see really three main challenges. The one is we can create large computational data sets because we can just, you know, run a lot of compute. But right now there doesn't exist a large experimental data set. And, you know, what we want to do is create, you know, a consistent data set, one that's reproducible, uh, you know, that, um, you know, that the experimental results are done in a consistent way. The other thing is a lot of, when you look at a lot of the data sets that are out there, a lot of them just have positive examples. People kind of throw away, you know, the failure cases and negative examples. But from an ML perspective, we want the negatives because we need to train models. We want to be able to show that the models work. And finally, you know, we've been focusing initially on the project and a lot of the computational side of things. but I don't think, and you know, we don't think that people, um, you know, will really take computationalists, you know, I, I guess take them seriously, but really take it to the next level until we show that we can really predict what we see experimentally. So we need both the computational and experimental side of things together to really demonstrate the entire pipeline working well. Next is we are running out of materials. Uh, for a specific application, specific, um, you know, like CO2 or, you know, there might be 5,000 materials that have the, the properties that you want for, uh, you know, a specific application. You know, with current ML models and DFT, we can basically screen all of these uh, computationally. Um, so we need to find new materials. And so anything we can do to increase the number of known stable materials out there, I think is going to be really beneficial, especially as we see the computational pipelines getting more and more efficient. And finally, um, 
is the adoption of ML models. So, you know, I'm an ML guy. Uh, a lot of the team is ML. And we know how to release data sets for the ML community. We know how to release code, et cetera, for the ML community to use. But the models that we're developing, we want them not to be only used by the ML community, but to, by computationalists, by experimentalists who might not have as much familiar, familiarity with GitHub. They probably don't have access to hundreds of GPUs. You know, so we want to be able to democratize a lot of the technologies we're developing. And we're kind of trying to figure out ways of getting the, the things that we're developing into the hands of uh, the practitioners to others. And we'll hopefully be and we're basically looking to work uh, closely with computational and, computational and experimentalists to see what they need, what they want, and what is most effective for them in using some of the uh, technologies we're developing.